graphically and algebraically. Now that we have solved absolute value equations graphically and algebraically, we are going to put these two things together in order to solve an absolute value inequality. In example one, we're going to solve the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 3 graphically, and we're going to graph our solution on a number line. For the first step, just like with equations, we're going to treat each side of the inequality like an equation. We want to graph y equals the absolute value of x. And we also want to graph y equals 3. Just like when solving an equation, we can see that these two graphs cross each other twice. Step 3 is to identify all the x values that satisfy the inequality the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 3. In order to do this, we're looking for where the absolute value graph, which that was the blue graph that we drew above, the v-shape, where the v-shape is greater than, which would be above the line y equals 3, the line y equals 3 was the red horizontal line from above. So we're looking for where the V is above the line in this part and in this part. What we need to do for give our answer is to look for the X values. So we're going to look from left to right to determine the X values that work. The solution right here was at X equals negative 3. So when X is less than or equal to negative 3, the absolute value graph is above the line. Our second solution was over on the right side when x was equal to positive 3. Since it went to the right when x was greater than or equal to 3, the absolute value graph is also above the line y equals 3. The last step is to write our solution as a single answer and to graph it on a number line. Putting both of these things together, we have x is less than or equal to negative 3, or x is greater than or equal to 3. We need to write the word or there because you can be one thing or the other, but not both. To graph on the number line, I create a solid dot at negative 3 because I have an equal to. I shade left because x is less than or equal to negative 3. I put a solid point on the graph at x equals 3, and I shade to the right because x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So my number line solution has the outside of my number line shaded. Pause the video while you do you try number 1. Attempt to solve that graphically. I graph the left side as a V-shape moved two units to the left. I graph the right side as a horizontal line at y equals 1. And I'm looking for when the absolute value is greater than or equal to 1, so when the V-shape is above the line. That happened two places, the left side of the graph and the right side of the graph. I need the X value of where these two things happen. If I'm on a number line, the first solution on the left was at x equals negative 3, and the second solution was at x equals negative 1. So I'm putting solid points on both of those. And then to shade, I need to shade out for the outsides, because those are the two places where the v was above the line. To write this as an inequality, I'm going to say, x is less than or equal to negative 3, or x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Again, I need the or there because I can be one of those things or the other, but not both at the same time. Turn the page and we'll do example number 4 together. Sorry, that's example number 2. Um, we want to solve the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 4 graphically and graph our solution on the number line. Just like with the greater than, we want to start out, we want to graph the left as a v moved 1 to the right. Then we're going to graph the right side as a horizontal line 
at y equals 4. We're looking for the place where the absolute value, which is the V shape, is less than the horizontal line or the part that's shaded on the graph. Remember, the answer we want to give are the x values. So we need to look from left to right to figure out the x values where this is true. On the left, my x value is negative 3. When x is greater than negative 3, because it's the right side, the absolute value is below the line. The right solution is that x equals 4. I'm sorry, 5. When x is to the left of 5, this is also true. So when x is less than 5, the absolute value is below the line y equals 4. Now we need to put that on a number line. If we smushed this graph down, it would be all the parts between negative 3 and 5. And for this inequality, we didn't have an equal to. So when we plot our points, they're going to be open circles. If I'm going to write my solution, I can write it the way I did above, where x is greater than negative 3 and x is less than 5. Or, since I need both things to be true and I'm sandwiched in between these values, I can write it as a compound inequality with negative 3 is less than x is less than 5. Pause the video while you do, you try number 2. For this inequality, I want to rewrite with the absolute value on the left. When I do that, realize in my original problem, I had a greater than. When I switched the left and the right sides, it became a less than. I graphed the left side of the inequality and the right side of the inequality, and these two graphs cross when x equals negative 3 and when x equals positive 1. I'm looking for where the V-shape is below the line, so that would be the values in between those two numbers. The easiest way to write my inequality is working from left to right. Negative 3 is less than x, which is less than 1. To graph these numbers on the number line, I only need to put on the important numbers, the negative 3 and the 1. I'm going to have open circles in my graph because I cannot equal those numbers. And I'm going to be shaded in between because I want the values where both things happen. Turn the page and we'll do example 3 together. For example 3, I want to solve the absolute value of x plus 4. All plus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 5. I'm going to solve that graphically and graph my solution on the number line. Again, I'm going to graph the left side of the equation. And then I'm going to graph the right side of the equation. I'm looking for all the places where the absolute value graph is greater than or equal to. So when the V is above the line. When is the V above the line? Everywhere. So for this one, the solution is all real numbers. We can write that as the fancy R in the solution set, or we could write out all real numbers. If we graphed this on a number line, we'd create a number line, and the entire number line would be shaded in. On our picture, the entire V was above the line. Pause the video while you attempt, you try number three. I graph the left side of the inequality as my V. I graph the right side of the inequality as a horizontal line. And I'm looking for when the V is below or less than the line. My V is always above the line. So the answer for this is never. In math, I'm going to write that as the empty set, or I can write the words 
no solution. To graph this on a number line, my number line would simply be empty. How do you know when your solution is no real solution? You know this because the inequality will never be true. In my original problem, if I had moved the 3 to the other side first, I would have had when is the absolute value of x plus 2 less than negative 1. Absolute value is always positive. So when is a positive less than a negative? Never, and that's no solution. How do you know when your solution is infinitely many solutions or all real numbers? Infinitely many solutions or all real numbers occurs when the inequality is always true. Up above in the top of the example page, if we had moved the absolute value to be by itself, we would have had the absolute value of x plus 4 is greater than or equal to negative 6. So when is a positive greater than or equal to a negative? Always. If it's always true, then that means our answer is all real numbers or infinitely many solutions. Turn the page and we'll do example number four together. We're going to start out just like we did before. We're going to graph the left side and we're going to graph the right side and we're going to determine when the inequality works. I graph the left side as the red V and the right side as the green line. I want all the values that satisfy the inequality where the absolute value is less than the line. So I'm looking for the parts on the graph where the V is beneath the line. If I look at any given position, like on the y-axis, the V right here is beneath the line. So from the point where they cross to the left, the V is beneath the line. There's only one point of intersection, so there's only going to be one part to my inequality for this. Remember, I'm looking for the x values. The x value where they cross was x equals 2. I want everything to the left of that. So I have x is less than 2. To graph that on a number line, I'm going to shade to the left for less than and a nice open circle at x equals 2 because I was not allowed to be equal to 2. I was only allowed to be less than 2. Pause the video while you attempt you try number 4. Remember to state your solution and graph it on the number line. I graph the left side and graph the right side. Since it's an inequality, I'm looking for when my absolute value or my V shape is above my line. If I look at any given spot, my V shape is above the line when the V shape is higher on the graph than the line was. The graphs cross at X equals zero and the V is above the line on the left side of that. On my number line, I'm showing to the left of zero. My original inequality was just a greater than, not an equal to, so I need a nice open circle at x equals zero, and I'm going to write my inequality as x is less than zero.